Hi Space Cats, I'm Dr. Maggie Lou. Welcome back to my channel. As some of you might know, I teach a machine learning in science MSc at the University of Nottingham. And as part of that, I also run student projects. This year, the project I'm running is in conjunction with the space engineering and pharmacy departments. In this video, I want to talk a little bit about what they're up to. So let's begin. In the harsh environments of space, humans face numerous challenges that can have detrimental effects on their bodies. For decades, there have been concerns about how space travel could be harmful to astronauts, from muscle and bone loss due to extended periods of weightlessness, cardiovascular changes due to the heart's adjustments to microgravity and how it pumps blood around the body, to radiation exposure as you're beyond the protection of Earth's atmosphere. In 2021, scientists at my university sent thousands of worms into space. The aim? To shed light on the causes of muscle changes during spaceflight. The microscopic worms, known as C. elegans, hold the key to understanding muscle changes in space. Despite the vast evolutionary distance between humans and worms, previous research has actually shown that these tiny little creatures and humans share common molecular and physiological characteristics. And they also experience similar molecular changes that affect muscle and metabolism in the extreme environments of space. Another thing about worms is that we benefit from them having a short lifespan and a simple body structure. This makes them easy to study and manipulate in a laboratory setting. Their small size, rapid reproduction rates and transparent bodies allow for detailed observation and experimental manipulation. This simplicity enables researchers to conduct controlled experiments and precisely analyze the effects of microgravity and space-related conditions on various biological processes. Furthermore, using worms as model organisms in space research offers a cost-effective and ethical alternative to conducting similar studies on larger, more complex animals um, or even humans. Worms require less space, resources, and care. Although in our project, I've already encountered some problems asking me who will be responsible for the worms themselves and then for euthanizing any that remain at the end of the project. Now, this particular mission aims to identify the precise molecules responsible for these changes in muscle loss and test new therapies to prevent muscle loss in zero gravity, either by targeting them with novel drugs or interventions. This lays the foundation for safely sending humans on long-term deep space missions, like to Mars and beyond. This has implications not only for astronauts though, but also for many situations here on Earth. For example, firstly, the insights from space can help combat muscle loss associated with aging. Understanding muscle atrophy in space can aid in developing treatments for genetic muscle disorders. Space research can also inform better rehabilitation programs for muscle recovery here on Earth. Applying space findings can help counteract muscle loss caused by inactivity in our daily lives. And lastly, in sports performance, knowledge from space can optimize training and injury prevention strategies for athletes. Now, in terms of machine learning, this comes into play because on a Petri dish full of worms, you need to identify exactly where they are and track each worm over time. And this is no easy task, as there are potentially new worms popping up all of the time. Yes, they breed like crazy. You also need to monitor each worm's movement and growth over several days. Typically, this is done manually, and it's incredibly difficult to keep track of worms, especially when you have more than two or three. So machine learning can play a crucial role in tracking and monitoring the developments of worms in space using computer vision algorithms to analyze the images of the worms. By training the algorithms on a large data set of annotated worm images, they can learn to automatically detect and track individual worms, measure their movement patterns, and extract features relating to their development and behavior. Machine learning algorithms can identify key characteristics such as body length, movement speed, bending patterns, and other morphological traits, allowing researchers to assess the effects of microgravity and other space conditions on worm development. 
This automated analysis not only saves time and effort compared to manual tracking, but also enables the extraction of more detailed and precise information about the worms and their responses to space environment. Moreover, machine learning can help uncover complex relationships between the worms' physiological changes and various environmental factors. For example, by correlating the worms' development stages, gene expression patterns, and environmental conditions, we can identify specific molecular pathways or gene networks involved in the observed physiological changes. So right now, my students are developing the tools along these lines to automate the process. It will be interesting to see how far they get. That's all for this week's video. If you enjoyed it, please don't forget to leave me a like, share, and subscribe.